All right. I recall the regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. It is March 24th, Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Roll call. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Ben McDougall. Here. Paul Rodriguez. Here. Mike Stein. Here. Ruth Summers. Here. I'm Nick Rico. Chairman. Okay. Approval of the minutes from last month, February. Move approval. Thank you, Jason. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Paul. Any corrections, additions, subtractions? Barring none. All in favor? I wasn't at the meeting. We have how many abstentions? Two? One. Two abstentions. Ruth and Ben. And uh, oh, that's you. Sorry. Uh, the superintendent's report. A copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of February is included in the packet. Uh, our average effort in total for the month was $1.42 million today. Our effort quality was well within our permitted limit. We averaged 96% uh, BOD removal and 99% uh, total civilian solids removal for concentrations of seven and two, respectively. Um, a copy of the pump station flows for the month was included in the packet. Uh, no issues were identified. Uh, let's see, I had a long conversation with Senator Ann Kearney uh, the other day concerning um, uh, LD 1911, which is an act that prohibits the containers from clean soils and, uh, with, from uh, so, so called forever chemicals. And although I ultimately did not change her vote, she admitted that I brought up some valid points and she needed to think about. Uh, this legislation as amended will ban the sale or application of all municipal, uh, commercial and industrial sludges regardless of PFAS concentration while allowing all agricultural sludges set to be land applied again regardless of PFAS concentrations. I was advocating for continued application of all sludges that raise based on screening limits and application rates as developed by CDC and DEP. Um, in addition, I received an email from Fred Gallant, a DEP inspector, with a survey focus around um, septage and if he would be willing to take in more septage. Our charter, uh, we are only allowed to take in septage from Scarborough and, I, and if I found that it was impacting our treatment process that I would stop accepting it, which has happened in the past. Um, we had to actually shut down one uh, heavy uh, source of septage uh, in uh, a couple times, actually. Uh, next thing is powered air purifying respirators, or PAPRs, as is the acronym is pronounced. We, have, we are currently evaluating the use of PAPRs in lieu of fitted cartridge respirators. Speaking with our safety consultants, uh, PAPRs uh, provide a much higher level of protection without the fit test people. We're also looking uh, to purchase a few of the AEDs or the automated external defibrillators that you see um, in public spaces now, and we would be strategically locating these throughout the facility uh, and uh, maybe within a couple of the trucks that are constantly out on the grounds. Out around town. I feel this is an important piece of safety equipment and, uh, that hopefully we'll never have to, that we will never have to use. Uh, Rudy, uh, Rudy has signed up for a two-year electrician training at the Maine Electrical Institute that will begin this September. I'm starting that program and I'm happy to report that Josh passed his grade three operator's license again. Any questions for the superintendent? I had a question about the pump station flows. The last line, first page, last column, pump station 26, maybe second page, sorry. 
I remember you saying if you took the max and average and it was two and a half or more, there might be an issue. And I know it's close to two and a half on pump station 26. I'm wondering, you know, when I have seen something like that before, that there was a service cap that was leaking, is it possible it might be something like that? It, it's uh, possible that, but it's also as you get down in the uh, lower flow numbers, which is this station doesn't really have a lot of flow. You're, you're your bring your up a good point. The average yes. ratio gets a little wonky. whacked out. Yeah, good point. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Any more questions for the superintendent? Go ahead, Ben. Are there any developments with our investment accounts? I, I met with uh, KeyBank, and they are uh, making some adjustments. They want to make them slowly, okay. uh, as as planned, and uh, so and they're they're keeping me posted on the changes that they're making to, to react um, appropriately to the current investment market. It's it's a tough one. Okay. Cool. Moving on to correspondence. I request a amendment of the rules to add two items to correspondence. A suspension of the rules, right? Rather. That's right. All right. I'll need a motion. motion to suspend the rules and add two items under correspondence. Thank you, Jason. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ben. Any questions? What are they? Uh, we'll add 5F, which is the DEP septage survey, which I just referenced. Yep. And then I'll add uh, 5G, which is the IDEX email um, uh, cool. discussion that I had. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. All right. So, A. DEP discharge incident report. On February 25th, uh, we had a plug sewer uh, which caused a sanitary sewer overflow from a 10 inch gravity sewer located within the Wild Duck campground. District staff worked with the EcoClean who was able to jet the sewer and clear the plug. Both DEP and Scarborough's Harbor Mass were notified of the overflow. A copy of this report is included in your packet. Uh, five Stewart Drive, ability to serve. Um, an ability to serve letter was provided for the proposed 3,872 uh, square foot retail and office building. Um, the requested flow is for 482 gallons per day of typical sanitary wastewater based on our standards. 21 Washington Ave, um, an ability to serve letter was provided for the proposed 4,800. Uh, square foot additional uh, uh, warehouse space. Uh, no additional flow was requested for this. It's just for uh, storage. Uh, we have received the draft copy of our asset management program, and as completed by Hoyle Tanner and Associates, a copy is included in your packet. We are currently reviewing this report and look, uh, starting to look at different programs that we want to uh, move forward with. Uh, 5F was, uh, uh, I guess it should, well, wait a minute here. One, one, I, I no. forgot to flip over. I'm sorry about that. 5E, uh, Old Millbrook uh, closed caption TV inspection report. Uh, Vortex Services has completed our annual uh, CCTV sewer inspection. It, you know, just as a reminder, I budget for about 10,000 square feet, per, uh, 10,000 feet of sewer inspection a year. Uh, this year, we inspected the old Millbrook area. The inspection identif identified several deficiencies, and we're currently reviewing uh, this report to identify the best approach for repair. Now, uh, working on five, now to 5F, uh, the DEP septage survey. The district's DEP inspector called me the, uh, the other day to ask if I could fill out a short survey with regards to septage disposal at the district. DEB is conducting the survey in response to the concerns surrounding PFAS and septage and the current practice of land application of septage throughout most of the rural areas of the state. 
DEP calculated that the sanitary district has the capacity to take in over 8 million gallons of septage annually. As I noted, uh, they made several errors in the calculation. Our true annual capacity is probably around 200,000 gallons per year. Currently, we receive approximately 100,000 annually. Um, and then with regards to 5G, this is an email I received. I sent out uh, regarding IDEX. I received a phone call from uh, Tom Hall calling the district's review process with regards to the IDEX project proposed for the Innovation District. I re responded to Tom's message via the attached email. As I noted in the email, the district provided IDEX with the ability to serve letter in des on December 15th, which identified the review timeline to be about 30 days. We did not receive this submittal until March 2nd, which did not have any other process waste characterizations. We did let them know that this was a required for review. We, we received a supplemental packet on Friday, March 18th, after the trustees packet was prepared and distributed. I am currently reviewing the supplemental information and anticipate that this project will be on the next agenda in April. And that's what I have for correspondence. Cool. Any questions about the correspondence? Nothing. Do, do we know what happened in Wild Duck Campground? Uh, Other than that it was a clump of rags? No. It, it, and isn't the campground shut shut down? For yeah, the but th th there's a, uh, uh, the tenants is a fairly large sewer line uh, for us, or the next size up. Um, and it's, it's a, a highly active line that services um, a lot of the Dunstan area. Okay. So it's, it's not just servicing Wild Duck okay. Campground. Uh, it, was, it was just a plug. It's a sewer that we typically jet um, uh, on a monthly basis, a sewer line that we jet on a monthly basis during uh, while weather allows. In the wintertime, the weather just doesn't allow it. And it just, usually, it's not a problem. It just happen to have one. OK, thank you. All right, Jason. Quick question. Did I hear that correctly? Did you say the calculation showed that we could receive 8 million, and yet the reality is 200,000? That is correct. It's quite, a, quite a difference. <laughs> <coughs> All right, just checking. Thank you. Uh, sorry, didn't, uh, I won't be doing that again. Um, I just got a text from Joe Carroll, and he is running late. He got uh, tied up at work. Okay. That is the life of a firefighter. <clears throat> um, any more questions on the correspondence? I did have a couple of questions. First, on the Vortex report for Old Mill Brook. Interesting report. Uh, all it has is manholes. It doesn't even recognize the street names. There are no, none listed. Well, the manhole numbers correspond to our manhole numbers on our skater. Uh, on our GIS. On our GIS. Okay. They're easily identifiable. You're only, I only provided you with a snapshot of some of their findings. Cool. A summary of their findings. Uh, there is a much more detailed information, and along with pictures, locations, and other items. Excellent. Good to know. And um, two questions on the asset management report. How much did it cost, and when did we sign the contract? Oh boy, how much did it cost? I want to say it was. I don't remember off the top of my head. If I have to, uh, if I. Including the inventory, I want to say it was around fifty thousand dollars, but I would have to go check to Ooh, confirm that hope number. Not. Did we spend that, or did we get some grant money for that one? We got some grant money, um, and we, the original well, uh, that grant money came from our pockets too, so we did spend it on that too. Yikes. I'd have to check on the value, the value of it. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it was around that. Um, and the contract actually was originally signed, I want to say, around 2019-2020, somewhere in that time frame. Because here's the beef that I have with this. First of all, yes, it has a picture of Scarborough on the front page. It says for Scarborough, Maine. 15-page report. I think it was all boilerplate until page 12. So the last four pages are about Scarborough. And, and it barely mentions Scarborough 
at all. One of the things that you don't see in, which was not included as part of this, is the total inventory. Uh, that goes along with it? That goes along with it. Okay. It is a huge Yes, it's a big document. Yes, that, yes. That really actually took up most of the, the, uh, the effort. Okay. That um, I'm glad to hear about. It's, I couldn't include it in the document it because it's just too massive. Yep. And uh, the information that it does provide is also fairly um, detailed, has value, life cycle costs, anticipated uh, replacement time frame, um, and measures the... Uh, What's the term? Criticality, I think. Criticality. Yes. Yeah, thank you. All right. Good to know. I that, didn't that see is, that. That is where all of that helpful, money is. Helpful. Very helpful. Is there. Thank you. Cool. Anything else? Mm, not for me. All right, Jason. Just a follow up question to that. I assume maybe that hasn't happened yet because you've just received the report, but do we, do we have a plan in place to implement this program? Who's going to oversee it? Is it going to be you? Is it, are you? That's what we're evaluating right now and looking at the uh, various programs that are out there because they're, a lot of them are really designed for much larger communities and you can, and I've seen it done a million times that people overbuy and because there isn't one individual that's responsible for it, it gets, it, 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 it fails. Mm -hmm. And that's my major concern. I want to make sure that this program doesn't fail. So uh, working with Josh uh, and um, uh, Micah from the town who oversees the, 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 uh, the asset pro management program for the town and trying to really f uh, find something that's going to work for the district. That's, that's going to take some effort. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Go ahead, Ben. I had a question <clears throat> on the Vortex report. Are the, the numbers listed, is that the number of incidents in that stretch of pipe, like where it says? That's, uh, that's actually a, a, the level of severity. Okay. So, like if. Um, so, where there's a 19 for grease yes, on one stretch a, of pipe, that's, that's a severe grease problem? That's a severe grease problem. Okay. And so, we. Scheduled to go out there and, and jet that line to, make, to resolve that. Okay. Yeah. And do we see if there's something else going on, if someone's doing other activities other than regular household activities? We didn't see anything. It's just, you know, oddly enough that actually a lot of your grease, most of your grease problems is more residential than, than commercial, right. <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah. Um, and you know, from the TV work that they did, they didn't see anything that was out out of out of ordinary. I mean, we'll keep an eye out. You know, we looked around the area, and we don't see anything that stands out. Okay. Sometimes people have home businesses where they're mm -hmm. baking and doing things that yeah. might. No old neighbor of mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. She Thank made you. Great wedding cakes. <laughs> cool. Any more comments, questions? Go ahead, Mike. Um, you mentioned that on an annual basis that we inspect 10,000 feet of sewer. How do you decide where that 10,000 feet is? Uh, two, two things. Something that we haven't TV'd recently. Okay. Um, would be one of the criteria, and also in discussion with um, uh, my collection system staff to determine where they feel that 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 we most okay. appropriately done. Okay. No more questions, comments? All right, moving on to old business, which we have none. New business, lot number six, Innovation District, The Downs. Excuse me, i get myself organized here. Um, on behalf of Municorp, um, on 
let's see. Uh, St. Clair Associates requested district approval for a garage um, uh, as presented in the submittal document. Uh, a, and based on main subsurface disposal rules, this request, the requested flow is for 42 gallons per day. This request, this request would supersede the district's September 24th, 2020 approval. Uh, on September 24th, 2020, the district approved a proposed development for lot six. Uh, this proposal consisted of two buildings, building A and B. Building A considered several incubator spaces, while building B consisted of both incubator spaces plus apartments. This project was broken up into two phases, phase one being building A and phase two being building B. Building A has been constructed, but building B never was. Uh, the original flow allocation were as follows. Building A was 120 gallons per day and building B was 1,648 gallons per day. Since only building A was built and only required 120 gallons per day, no additional capacity reserve fee beyond the original lot uh, flow allocation have been paid. Previously, lot six was merged with lot 11. Consequently, lot six has a combined flow allocation of 320 gallons per day. This proposal limits building B and replaces it with the proposed throttle car garage. The garage has the same footprint as building B, but without the apartments. As recommended, I recommend approval with the following conditions. The lot wastewater flow allocation limited to 320 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Uh, from which the throttle gar garage will be an, an allocation of 160 gallons per day and building A will have the remaining 160 gallons per day. Any flows in excess of the allotment or characteristics are subject to additional approvals. Uh, no additional capacity reserve fee are due at this time. Any flows in excess of the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Uh, one reason why I, I broke the flows up 160 per building is that we bill based on um, meter, uh, uh, Portland Water District meters that serves the, uh, the buildings. Originally, this lot was going to have one meter to serve the two buildings. Now, each building is going to have its own water meter. Uh, the 160 gallon per day is the minimum flow allocation uh, per building that we bill, uh, base our bills off of. So that's how they ended up with 160 gallons each. Cool. And we have the engineers here. Shall and we ask them to give a little summary, please? Sure. Actually, can you do, do we need to have a motion on the floor before we discuss the project? Yes. I believe we should. All right. Thank you, Jason. Uh, motion to approve. Yeah. Second. We get a second? Thank you, Ben. Now we can have the engineers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair. I'm with St. Clair Associates. Um, Mr. Hughes did a great job of explaining uh, basically what we are proposing tonight. Uh, the building use had been a combination of two uses, the first floor as an incubator building and the second floor with eight apartment units. With the um, acquisition of the property by Nani Corp, uh, they're looking to construct Throttle Garage, which would be a complementary use to the Throttle Car Club, which is located on the adjacent lot. The garage would be just a single story building and it would be used for a combination of things, well the site would be used for a combination of things. One is for the throttle garage itself, which would allow car aficionados to do minor upgrades to their vehicles. They, they, there's a business in Portland that would actually be moving into this uh, building that actually does that, specializes in specialty car restorations and um, performance enhancement type things for that added safety features for the older vehicles, that type of thing. Uh, so that was is what would happen within the building itself. 
And then during events, the parking that's on the site would be available for additional overflow parking for the Throttle Car Club. So uh, it's kind of a complimentary use and uh, certainly something that will augment the, the club membership itself. So uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity to, to move forward with the construction of this building. The sewage flow is much lower than originally anticipated because the apartments are not in the building itself. Uh, so that's why we're here tonight. Cool. Any questions for the engineer? Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions, comments about the project? Barring mm -hmm. none, all in favor? None opposed. And that was approved with the conditions added. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Double checking. Budget summary. Uh, the two month budget summaries include the packet. I recommend approval. No Motion problem. to approve. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Paul. Questions for the superintendent? I Go ahead. Have a question. Yep. What is MAT and SUP office? What does that stand for? Materials, Materials and, supplies. and supplies. Materials and supplies. Thank you. Very popular in the most line there. It is popular online. What's that? <laughs> it's very popular in the next six lines. Yeah, MAT and SUP. For the office, sub. for equipment, yes. building grounds, vehicles, upper. Cool. All right. Any other questions, comments? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed? All right, any public comments? All right, trustee comments. We'll start with Ben. All right, where, where were my notes? I'd like to thank everyone at the district for all the smooth running operation and especially uh, Rudy for getting into that two year program. That's a great thing to do. And I think that's fantastic. I'm yeah. very happy about that. Me too. And, uh, and Josh for passing the, the grade three exam. Yeah. Cool. Mike. Right. Thank you. Um, Yes, um, what struck out at me going through the package is, you know, with, with Rudy um, doing a two-year electrician training and, uh, and that Josh Roy passed his grade three operator's license. Congratulations to both of them. Thank you, Mike. Jason. Uh, similar comments. Congrats to, to Rudy and Josh, uh, but also just wanted to, to speak uh, uh, about you know the the morale down of the office, um, at least from what I see in being there every Friday, that it seems very good. As many people may not know we've been through some dark times down there uh, of late, but uh, uh, I think there's a really good vibe in in the office and around the grounds, and it's a testament to your leadership. Thank you, Dave, and uh, it's really nice to see. Um, it's like I said, it's been a dark time, but uh, crew seems to be in good shape and doing a really great job. And we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. Bruce? Well, Jason looked at my notes. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't come down and see you, though, on Fridays. But I do, I, I think you're running a great staff. You really are. But um, allowing, not allowing, but um, knowing that, like Josh and the other gentleman, has the freedom and the support to go off and do those types of things and get those types of um, Certifications is fantastic, and I thank Serena and Wendy and um, all of you for keeping such a great um, organization running so smoothly. So thank you very much. Thank you. Cool, Paul. It's hard to be last. Thanks. To, no, no, I know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, appreciate everything the staff is doing. Uh, appreciate the quick response. Um, you know, to the to the issue um, out at the camp there. Uh, uh, I think that was really good, you know, professional work that was done um, to get that addressed, and and absolutely uh, echo the sentiments. Uh, uh, congrats to Josh and uh, kudos to Rudy for uh, for stepping up. 
That's it. Well, I'll echo my fellow trustee comments. Congrats to Josh on the grade three. Good luck, Rudy, on getting the electrician's certificate, the journeyman's license there. And I'll entertain the final motion of the evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Ben. All in favor? We're done. Thank you very much.